like to open up, um, let's start with the personnel committee. We saw the agenda that, um, that was placed um, on the email uh, by Brian. Um, so the first point of, uh, the first topic will be the personnel committee recommendations. Um, <clears throat> Brian, do, do you wanna say anything prior to a discussion on this? Well, I'm thinking maybe we should take that out of order because I don't, other than Tom, I think Keith was gonna come up from the personnel committee and I think Joyce was gonna come from the personnel committee. Okay, okay, so let's, uh, let's sideline that for a, a second here. And um, how about if we go to capital improvement planning committee and um, have a discussion on what they're asking for. Um, um, Dan, you're, you're part of this committee, right? Yeah. Okay. And the only thing being requested are, well, is priority A and B and C. Um, there you go. Okay, so let's um, let, let's start with the library at seventy five thousand dollars. I think I'm going to bring up this tool. Okay, that okay, we used good. last time. Sure, perfect. That's great. That way we can sort of look at the. <clears throat> That's the one into CPA funds, right, Brian? Yep, that's they put in a request for CPA funds for the. Those are the handicap uh, accessibility improvements that would install the lift, um, make the restrooms, uh, one of the restrooms handicap accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, do a couple, you know, a couple other modifications to. To make it fully accessible, except for, um, I think there's they have a waiver, um, for the front ramp. And they would seek a waiver for the the width between the stacks, um, but I believe that's going forward to make that request from the architectural uh, AAB. And they can but, still use the front door. Yep. Okay. That's great. Yeah. I mean, the big thing is the width in the restroom. Right now, sure. uh, there's no accessible route down to the down to the lower level, and there's no accessible restrooms. Right. <clears throat> and the proposal what, what is is that it that it's CPA eligible. Um, they, for the past two years, we have applied for a grant for this, the the ADA Municipal Improvement Grant, mm -hmm. and both years we've been turned down. Okay. Um, it's a small pot of money, and there's tons of projects that get submitted. And quite honestly, I don't think we have the usage that would the usage of the library because we're a small community. So it's hard to make the case compared to cities who, whose projects may get mm -hmm. thousands of people who use it or yeah. you know, tens of thousands of people who use it. So um, that's we a hard able, one. I don't think we're we going to get. might be able to make an argument with a percentage of population, but I guess that's not looked at. So, yeah. I mean, I think there's a million dollars statewide, so. Yeah. Our project asking for one hundred fifty thousand. Not, not going to make it. Okay, it's tough, but we've we've tried. Okay. Any other questions? Does anyone have any questions about this project that's happening at the library? Okay, so we'll just plug that in, and it's in. It's in array. Okay. Um, the second piece would be the town offices. A yep. 30, uh, hello? Yeah, you want me to talk about that one? Sure. Yep. And just so if you remember the tool that 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 Fred and I put together last year, um, towards the right here, there's mm -hmm. talk about free cash available and then yep. the free cash remaining is up here. Mm -hmm. This is with all this with all these projects plugged in. That's what we would have left. Mm -hmm. um, so that just gives us a running total so we can see um, where we stand. Okay. Brian, so I know where we're starting from. Where did we start this year, this fiscal year, in terms of free cash? Uh, 600 and something. No. As, as, oh, I know what you're asking, Fred. 
right. I want to know this 155819, how does that compare to where we left it at the end of last fiscal year? Oh, uh, where do we end it last year? Right. Um, is it here? Because this is our this is our 21. Um, I'll have to let me double check on that, Fred. OK, just to have an, an idea of. You yeah, know, right. Relating this to where we've been. Yep. Yeah, I mean, in the past, we've we've kind of ballparked, at least the finance is ballparked around trying to leave it around 200,000. Um, I don't know that there's rhyme or reason for that other than wanting to keep some in reserves. You know, if if in I reserves. remember last year, we left it high, yeah. not knowing what the tax collection situation would end up being. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll double check on that. Thanks. That would be interesting. I, I'm thinking that 270 is probably pretty close. Okay. Um, so this one is, um, uh, so this generator. would be the, the request for the emergency backup generator at the town offices. Again, the main concern here is the wet sprinkler system. And if we were to lose power for an extended time during the cold weather, um, we would have some issues trying to keep that building warm. That's really about it. Um, it was a price for a, I mean, the idea was that it would be a natural gas generator. We would make the argument to Berkshire Gas that we've taken certain equipment offline, mm -hmm. one being a, I don't know what the proper term is, but it keeps the humidity in the old, and it was a library building. So it kept, uh, it kept the humidity in the building that it needed to be for books, but that's been taken offline. Um, there's still a moratorium in place. So um, it, we could also go to propane if we needed to. Um, but that's that one. Okay. Um, so are there questions about that one? Any questions about the generator for the need? Okay. I think it's a useful project. I think we should go for it. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay, let's move on. Public safety telecommunications equipment, year two of two. Yeah. So if we recall, yeah, the existing public the the existing regional radio system operated by the by the FERCOG is on its last leg, or it's been on its last leg for a while. All the towns in Franklin County that used to use it are switching over to the state run system used by the state police. Mm -hmm. Um so we need to purchase new radios because it is a different frequency, new radios and equipment, essentially. Yeah. Um, this is year two. The first year um, was to get police and then start fire. And this would finish off um, that project for the fire department. This good. Will, what it'll include is uh, some of the repeaters that are needed for Communications from a fireman to the fire truck when they're inside of a structure. Mm -hmm. Sounds important. Yeah. What about maintenance per year? Hello? What will it be for maintenance per year? Yeah. Uh, I know they both carry line items in their budget. I don't know what that is. Um, we'd have to ask them. If it's go is your question, is it going to increase? It, of course, it's going to increase, but it's going to be outrageous. I hope not, but I don't know. <laughs> Great. I think it'll be cheaper than what they're paying to keep these other ones going. <clears throat> yeah, well, on you. Certainly a safety, a safety issue. So, um, yep. And we've already paid for half of it, so you know that's a go. We got to move. All right. New snowplow. I think we heard Keith talk about this at the last meeting, or maybe there was one before that. Twelve thousand dollars. He's got one that he can, I guess he can't keep welding and trying to put band aids on it. And uh, and we all know how we like our roads cleared. Um, so, any discussion, thoughts on the purchase of a new snowplow? Okay. So right now it stays. Um, it's good. 
Okay, next one. Purchase new oven at Waitley Elementary School for $21,000. Yeah, so this one, this one came as a surprise because um, it wasn't pre-programmed or anything, um, but it's pretty much what it says. Uh, the oven is original to the, to the school, so that makes it, what was that, 1990? Mm -hmm. So it makes it 30, 31 years old. Um, they've told us what they provided to us, said that it was having trouble keeping temperature, the door's not working. Um, and they had somebody come in and take a look at it, and they pretty much said it's 30 years old, and you're probably better off to get a new one. Okay. Um, but that's the they, information they provided to us. I bet the new one won't last 30 years. That's for sure. Um, many questions about this replacement? Will there, any, will there be any? Is that like installed and no hardware work on the outside? It's going to come out and fit in? My understanding is that that's the cost uh, to purchase and install it. I don't know the specifics if they have to modify the anything. Modify. That's a good word. Yeah. Okay. They did Already. present us with a with a uh, uh, summary of what's going to be coming up in the next few years because it seems like most of that equipment there being over 30 years old is getting into the replacement mode rather than the fixed mode. The same as the snow plow, you can only fix stuff so long and then you gotta start replacing, so. Right, absolutely. Um, okay. Um, well, I don't, I don't think it's right that this is 21,000 and then they're gonna come back and say, well, it's gonna be 28. I mean, I'm not, I, I'm all for replacing it, but I, I also don't think nobody knows the true cost of it. When will that happen, Brian? When will the true cost be? Um, this is the cost that, that that they've asked for. I don't I don't know that they'll come back for okay. additional monies. I assume they're going to do it over the summer, yep. but I, I'm not sure. Okay. And like anything else, if we wait, you know that price is going to go up. So um, any other thoughts? Comments concerning uh, the Whaley Elementary School oven. Hey, this is Patty. Can I just make a general uh, comment to what you're you just talked about with things going up? Sure. Um, I'm a I'm a cost engineer. I do estimating for a living. Okay. And we are seeing a huge spike now in cost of material and labor. If this if the Jobs Act goes through, expect everything to go up about ten to twenty percent. So the faster we get these things online, the better price we're gonna get. Thanks, Patty. Um, yeah, I know someone that was thinking about building a house and that's no longer the case because of uh, the cost of materials. That's just crazy. Um, okay. Replace carpets with tiles in three classrooms. Brian, I think this was a process, right? We've replaced others. And yeah, I think this is year, year I think three. it was three of three. Year three, eight. three. I think it's year eight. Yeah. Yeah. It feels, <laughs> feels, feels like yeah. it. It's year um, three of the project we started out doing. Yeah, yeah, we got to do it. Okay. Um, is this the end? Is that the end? This the end? is the end of what one more. they started out with. And since then, they are uh, coming up with some more rooms that they're going to want to do after this project is done. Oh, really? These are the classrooms, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's year three or four. It says yeah. year three or four on the printout. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let me see. It doesn't say that. Yeah, it does. Okay. 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 Um, Reconstruct the resources parking lot and driveway for $90,000. Right. <clears throat> yeah, here's the big ticket one, right? This yeah. is the big ticket. Um, well, it, it, it is what it says it is. It's, that's the project, reconstruct the resurface parking lot and driveway. Um, this has been on here for, might be the second or third year. I feel like when I, when I first started here five years ago, Keith told me it needed to be done. Yeah. Um, but it's 
it's a big ticket item and we're going to have to, you know, at some point find a way to do it, I think, but, um, it, well, it's you, not going to fall apart today. Yeah. No, it's um, not. I mean, I'm there once a week and I drive in there and I'll tell you, it's a little rough at the, towards the road, but I, I mean, I don't see any potholes or this thing crumbling away and maybe I'm not paying close enough attention to it, but Let's drive uh, faster. Well, see, that's the other thing. You got to drive very slow. So you see most of what you're driving by. Um, but maybe uh, if Keith is coming, let's find out what maybe he thinks or Dan, can you lend any? Well, this is also an old one that's been on there for, this request it was bypassed last year because of COVID. Right. But I think uh, originally this dollar amount was presented in along with con in conjunction with the work that they were doing in the center of town. Yeah. So I'm not sure as to right. what if this was something that was agreed upon <laughs> that we could put off for a year and still do for that same price. I don't know, but. Uh, that's another thing where the cost of any any oil product has gone up outrageous. So yeah. uh, the sooner we do it, the better. And I think along with this, which I don't remember seeing here, they didn't request was originally they were going to uh, modify or replace or rebuild the lighting poles on the way out the driveway. Mm -hmm. So I haven't heard anything more about that request. Okay. I, I had a thought on this one yeah. in conjunction with something else. Okay. I didn't see any money in the spreadsheet for adding to the general or vehicle stabilization. And I think we would like to do those. Yeah. What if we committed to this project, but funded half now and half next year? and took our stabilization increases essentially from the 45 that we're putting over to next year. Yeah. I think that's a reasonable approach. Any comments regarding this suggestion? No, it's opening up that uh, uh, pocket or bucket for uh, upgrade of buildings. Is that what you're driving at? Well, I'm just, I'm trying to find a place where we can get, take money without increasing sp total spending to add to the stabilization accounts. Okay. And this looks like a place where it, we might be able to do it if we roll half of this, this money into next year, which also essentially ties our hands and makes us, gives us a commitment that we have to do it next year. What do we got? So we got stabilization. So Fred, are you saying put this into vehicle stabilization? I'm saying split it um somehow divided among you know. Yeah. Do the general and 10, 15, whatever. Yeah. We can decide that, but <clears throat> use well, this thought, money for those funds. Yeah. I thought at the beginning of this 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 year's uh, sessions that we kind of agreed upon after our discussion last year was that the vehicle is by itself is what we should be doing is putting money aside for capital on our town buildings. And that's where I think that it should go, not be incorporated with the vehicles. No, it's, it's not a question of incorporate, just a question of if we give ourselves this pot of $45,000 and yes, it can go to a building stabilization, but you can right. go to whatever. I would agree I think, with that taking this as $45,000 and then later in this meeting, we can decide exactly where that will go. Yeah. Yeah. That, that sounds better. Yeah. And we don't, it doesn't appear that that parking lot needs to be resurfaced tomorrow. Yeah. It doesn't, um, appear, it, it needs resurfacing, but it doesn't appear to be urgent. Right. The, the other, the other thing we're, we're going to remember here, and I think with the parking lot, there was also a project to upgrade the sidewalk goes from the school out to Long Plain Road. 
And, and I think that could be part of the Complete Streets program to upgrade sidewalks that we're going to apply mm. for hopefully this year. So I, I think this needs to consider the sidewalk improvements as well. Yeah. To do the driveway and gear it up to put a sidewalk in, to me, doesn't make the most sense. I, I was just, we had a Complete Streets meeting this week. And this was one of the, the sidewalk there was one of the priority items, but there are others. And you also don't know what the state is going to decide to approve. No, right. Yes, we might like to have the sidewalks and they say, no, we like some other project or no project. Well, uh, I don't, I don't think, I don't think we should do it or not do it based on the sidewalk project. Cause we don't know if that's going to be funded or not. Mm -hmm. Well, if we put it in this year, you would, you would know. And then, if this isn't that critical, maybe it can wait another year. I'd also like to know what this $90,000 represents. Is it simply the resurfacing or is there something included in there? For instance, the, um, Dan mentioned lights, uh, Fred, you know, talking about the, uh, the sidewalk. Are any of those components within this price? My understanding is no. That nope. that's that's the cost to mill the pavement and then resurface it. Okay. Uh, all right. And how recent is that quote of ninety thousand? Uh this uh within the last month. Got it. Okay, so that's good. How long is that price good for? Um, so Keith includes it as part of the um as part of the regional there's a regional bid that goes out through the mm -hmm. FERCOG in terms of pavement. Um, and we estimate how much the quantity of pavement that we would need. Okay. Um, so there's a price that's locked in. I think it's for the, I think it's for the fiscal year. Um, just, yeah, till this fall, then it'll okay. jump up next year. Yeah, for, for sure. Well, um, let's have a- um, Let's play it both ways. We'll look at it one way and look at it the other way, Is it 45 or 90. Right. Um, where would where would the other forty five go? Do you want to go general stabilization, capital, um, or as Dan suggested, we create a building stabilization? That's what I would suggest. Yes, that's a good. That's well, we don't have that. That's for sure. Um, and if we if we create that, I would suggest we put twenty start that fund with twenty five, and put twenty into vehicle. Can we pull from vehicle to do the paving later? It seems like a pretty specific thing that you shouldn't be paving when it's a vehicle fund. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, how do we feel about um, about splitting this ninety thousand dollars? First, let's do the split for ninety thousand dollars. Do those in favor with splitting the ninety thousand dollars now, and then next year um, adding forty five more to this so that we round out this number, even though it might be more. Who's in favor of doing that? Tommy? Oops. Aye. Aye. Okay. Fred? Aye. Patty? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Dan? Yes. Jim? Yes. And I'm up. I'm yes as well. So, um, so we've made a commitment to doing this next year, but we're going to take half of this and now moving, moving, Let's talk quickly about a building stabilization fund. Can I ask um, a question before we move forward? Sure. Um, if next year's quote comes in at ninety-five or hundred thousand dollars, how does that affect what we're doing right now? It will have to cost more in. So we'll have to. Do, so we're obli we're obligating ourselves to we're obligating ourselves right now for ninety thousand dollars, but the projected cost may end up being ninety-five to hundred. It could be. Um, yeah. And and so okay. Just wanted to know yep. where we stood yep. on that. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. So um, 
those in favor of um, having a building stabilization or for, first of all, let's do that. Uh, building stab creating a building stabilization fund. Tommy? Yes. Fred? Yes. Patty? Yes. Dan? Yes. Jim? Yes. Bobby? Yes. Okay. And I'm yes as well. What kind of guidelines do you think we would, could put in, though? What, That's a good question. What? I mean, where do you draw the line? Uh, Dan? That's a Dan question. Uh, you're asking uh, the basically the amount that would be requested? No, no, no. Where, what, what would be considered yes and no? Like to, to fix a roof on one of the town buildings would yeah, be I get that. I, I get that. Um, well, you know, it's like... Uh, is it going to be routine routine maintenance or... or no, uh, not routine. No. Okay. No. No, I would think this is for okay. major building or... Improvements. Improvements. Yeah. Right. Okay. Significant. Well, I'm significant not. or not, just improvements. Well, uh, not not routine maintenance. Well, no, okay. You, you know, okay. you take like you take like the police station requested X number of dollars this year for exterior painting and interior painting. These funds would not go to that. That comes no, out okay. of the budget or something else. But this would okay. be more for major items when we get hit with them, okay. or like an emergency. Yes. True. Like yep. you got a leaky roof in the school, then let's mm -hmm. get it fixed. Yeah. And, and in the same way, we don't have any real strictures or instructions on general or capital stabilization i don't think we need specifics no. on this either i don't think you can As aside from just an acknowledgement we're putting money away for a rainy day to when buildings need major work it's yeah. earmarked for buildings right. right right though i do think that the discussion and the agreement amongst all bodies that this not be a maintenance account right well, is important, right? Okay. All right. Well, I, I think that we'll that the finance committee would be able to handle that <laughs> when that request comes up in any given year. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, can I can I say something about the vehicle stabilization account? Yeah, go. Um, just looking at the capital improvement plan. Um, so we asked, we want to project out projects ten years. We've asked departments to do that. And it doesn't mean we need to fund them that these years, but we have cruiser replacements right now listed on FY23 and FY25. Um, I think they're around $45,000, $50,000 each. Mm -hmm. um, All of so that. if we're trying to, I'm not saying we need to buy cruisers that year, but if we're trying to target the fund amount to what we think we're going to purchase, then um, we'll just need to think about whether that amount right now is enough. Yeah. Well, I think with, if we've got 62 there now, we're adding, looking to add 25 or add 20. Mm -hmm. And we're not looking to buy a new cruiser until, what do you say, 23? 23. Are oh, you going to split 20? Well, 23 you're gonna... is next year now, but you want 20 in capital? Year. I think with where we are, we're on target for that. You want 20 in vehicle stabilization and then 25,000 in, for, for simplicity's sake, right now, I'm, I'm going to put in. I'm going to put it in capital, but we can change that after. Okay. So what are you putting in the capital? The whole thing? No. 25. No, you're 25 in capital and 20 in vehicle. Yeah. yeah. Right. I'm just not going to add a new row right now, but I have it. Right. Okay. I'll All do right. that for our next meeting. Okay. Um, and we're taking this from free cash. Yes. Yes. Okay. We don't, where else can we take it from? That's Jim. Well, we have um, so, 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 vote. right. So, this, uh, I mean, your options are free cash, or if you're going to put it into a stabilization account, it's really raising appropriate, which are which is taxes or free cash. Mm -hmm. Um, well, this is already coming out of free free cash because that yeah. free cash re remaining number includes the ninety. You, right? 
Right. That, that's sort of why I picked that number because it's already yeah. right. yeah. been. We're it's not going to take any more out of free cash. We're right. Gonna take that 90 right. and split it in half. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. That works. Yeah. So then that's not right. Okay. Let me check something. You know, Brian, if you just want to make notes and, you know, play with this. Yep. In your free time. <laughs> You'll get it in a year. <laughs> <laughs> you want you understand what we're doing, Brian, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I I thought you might have been a little confused, but oh, it, it shouldn't change that bottom no. line on free cash remaining. No. no that, yeah, that was the whole idea is that it not change that, that number. We don't want to change that number. No. But that's still going to shortchange that 90. Well, maybe, the, maybe, maybe not. Well, yeah, that's a $64,000 well, question. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. It, just, it means that project gets done next year, not this year. Right. It, but it does commit to the it project. It may cost 95 or may cost 100,000, may cost 85,000. Yeah. But we'll right. see. Right. It's a commitment to it. Yes. So, all right. All right. All righty. Um, let's go with, um, where are we now? Um, the um, b -b 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 exterior and interior paint and repairs, $5,000. I think that's for the police station. Is that right? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That okay. is correct. Um, is the that an, what's that, that ongoing or didn't we give them money last year? No, we pulled it last year. All right. Okay. Uh, he's going to have the labor done through uh, community service through the jail. Jail. Okay. Yep. Um, and the it, exterior of the blocks that face the the driveway there are corroding from the salt from the winter. Yeah. Um, so those those really need to be repaired. Um, so. Okay. Leave it in. Leave it in there. Leave it. Leave it in. Okay. Um, New fencing at gates at East and West cemeteries for seventeen thousand dollars. Yep. Um, so, is this a must? Um, I don't think so. Um, Darcy's on the uh, so Darcy's Darcy Tozer's the cemetery commissioner. And she's also yep. on the uh, on the capital improvement committee. Um, no, she said it was not a must. Uh, not a must. Um, it's something that that's I think eventually going to need to be done, especially in East because they've had some damage to the fence, uh, yeah. some tree damage, but yeah. she, uh, Dan, correct me if I'm wrong, but she didn't say that this was a must have this year, right? No, she said it could ride. The, the, the big thing about it is eventually to put up a barrier on the uh, farming farmland side of it so that the farmers there that when they come out, don't drive into the cemetery and stuff. <laughs> the other part is broken, which is going to be supplemented. Those costs will be supplemented by uh, the person that did the damage, I guess, on some of it. Oh. But the rest of it that, she, that they're asking for is not necessary, and she agreed it could hold. Why don't we, why don't we put it over then? Let's put it over. That's, could that possibly be a CPA money? Uh, the next one, not, not this year, but um, does it qualify? That's a good question, Mike. Yeah, we'll we'll pursue. We'll think about it. And we'll pursue it. That's right. So take it out for now. Yeah. Now. Why is there no money for the excavator and the wood chipper? Oh, there's money. They're in uh, tax levy money. Okay. All right. Yeah. Right. We've traditionally carried debt as part of our operating budget. Okay. That's fine. Um, the, the Kubota, used Kubota has been removed. Um, discussions with the select board. Uh, with Keith and the select board have decided that there's a pretty good deal right now to there's a good arrangement right now that um, is working 
is working. It, it may not always be the case because um, it's a unique situation where we have a homeowner who's willing to do it um, for good money. And it probably won't be forever, but we can take advantage of it while it lasts, I guess. Yeah. And if things change, then 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 we'll have to come back, but or we'll have to figure out how to how to clear the walks, assuming they want to do that. Okay, well, that's good. Um, so Tommy mentioned um, that's not how you spell excavator. No, not even close. I wasn't going to say anything. Well, it was close, but <laughs> Listen, uh, I, knew, I knew what it said. I can't spell anyway, so I know what it said. Um, excavator lease purchase, wood chip lease purchase, town hall, historic rehabilitation. That's the forty three thousand that the CPA CPC puts away. Yeah. Um, I think there's around a hundred fifty something in change left on that on that borrowing. So three more years. Yeah, two or three more years. Um, if they can throw extra money at it, um, why not? But yeah, it's. I think the. I think it was the rate. The rate was ridiculously. Low. The interest rate was ridiculously low. I think it was less than one percent on the borrowing. Yeah. Um, so don't don't rock that boat. <laughs> I told Lynn she should invest it and not pay it off. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. And then we have a. We're trying to compare all the all the, <laughs> the costs here that might hit free cash, right? So, um, reduced tax rate. Right now, it's it's penciled in for two hundred thousand that we've done in the past. Yep. Um, yep. Again, you'll 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 hear my rants about about one using one time funds to um, reduce operating costs, but um, or you won't hear my rant. But I'll just say that um, it's probably not sustainable. Probably not, but probably not. But it has said that before. Ten years. Yeah. <laughs> Let's write it while while we can. Can uh, I ask a question, Brian? Yep. Yeah. How did we get from uh, that we had two hundred and fifty-five thousand or whatever it was, two hundred seventy-five thousand left in free cash last year? How did we get to 600 and whatever we started with this year? Um, Good fiscal management. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> new receipts. Yeah. yeah. Under, we underestimated new receipts, new, you know, buildings. Yep. Uh, That's one. So, so, yeah, it's conservative estimate on local receipts. Yeah. Um, it's unspent For budget proceeds. And a lot of it is um what's called miscellaneous revenue so it's one-time sources of revenue whether that's paying off i think this past fiscal year there was a couple <clears throat> larger um tax uh essentially tax takings um that were paid off so that helps but that but remember those are one time those are one time infusions of of cash so um and i, I will say that for for fiscal year 21 dls so the DLS department, uh, division of local services who reviews budgets, um, took a closer look at how we were estimating local receipts and they, we had to bump it up a little bit, um, closer to actuals. Okay. So that'll trim our free cash back a little bit, mm -hmm. um, for, this for the year. following year, not, not what we currently have. Right. Um, but yeah, that's the main way that that grows. Uh, any any COVID money that we got, did that show up in free cash or did that? Went no, that that won't show up in free cash. Um, so we got around one hundred fifty nine thousand. Um, and we still have some of that in the special revenue account. A lot of it went to the schools, uh, the elementary school for uh, to try to reopen the school. Um, so I, I could run an expense report on that stuff. Yeah. What the bigger money is the American rescue plan money that we haven't gotten yet. Mm -hmm. And we don't have much guidance on what it'll be, but that's how much do you think it'll be? <laughs> the estimate we have is around 450,000. Oh, so oh, depending wow. on how we can, oh. how we can use that, <laughs> we either won't be able to use it. Cause if it's so restrictive, um, yeah. I doubt it'll be restricted at all. 
if it's geared towards more economic recovery, then that'll be that'll be better. I, I do know one of the allowable uses is from the text of the federal legislation was investments in broadband, sewer and water. Um, and then the other categories are really are really ambiguous. Broad, <laughs> yeah, term. Term. we have broadband and we have uh, uh, water. We do not have sewer and we are not going to get into sewer. Yeah. I'm happy you said that. Yeah. <laughs> if there's a restriction for some COVID use, can't we use that to offset some of the school? Because we still have additional school costs that yeah. were that they told us about. Yep. Yeah, that's it's something to look into. Um, yeah, I, I mean, we'll have to. One of the one of the one of the uh, I guess the criticisms of the CARES Act was it wasn't you weren't allowed to replace lost revenue, and it was really geared towards response costs. So yeah. You had to make the argument it was necessitated by COVID. It, it was in response to COVID and um, it was unbudgeted, which. Yeah. So it was a little difficult. Just but Emergency s yeah. situations. Yeah. So, so Brian, you said there's an account, that, an emergency account or something that has some of that money still in it? Um, I'd have to, I have on my to-do list to reconcile that account. Um, there's probably 10 to 12. If I had to guess, there's about 10 to 12,000 left in that account, mm -hmm. in the CARES Act account. That's going to fluctuate because FEMA has been a disaster. Um, so we have the CARES Act money and, and we have FEMA money, FEMA res traditional FEMA response money, which FEMA, well, good or bad, FEMA is used to responding to short duration emergency events. So if it's a hurricane and then recovery is the next two months, it um, and then the change in administrations. So it could be anywhere from 10,000 to maybe 20,000, depending on how FEMA is going to reimburse certain costs. And then the change in administration, the former administration said, oh, we're very restrictive on how we're going to use FEMA funds. And then the new administration took over and said, no, 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 this is, this is the new guidance and everything was going to be eligible. And we're still waiting for the dust to clear on that. Okay. Can we get any breakout from the schools as to how much of the money that we're funding this year is actually reimbursing their costs from COVID? Or that is reimbursable. That right. Uh, I, I, we could ask Shelly for sure. Because then we may be able to use that money rather than tax levy money. Yeah, and there are, there is what's called ESSER, which called ESSER 3, I think is, I don't know what it stands for, but it's school, mm -hmm. it's school grants. And I've seen different numbers um, from that based on what schools would get. And I don't know how much of that could offset. Um, I, I know when the cost. schools were giving their presentation, some of the money, some of the figures that they gave were because they had increased costs from this past school year from COVID. And I'm just wondering if any of those increased costs can be covered by non-tax levy money. Yeah, that's that's a conversation we can have with, with Shelly. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'll ask, I'll email her. Brian, did you yeah. say it, did you say at the beginning of this conversation that those monies could not be used to offset the budgeted funds. CARES Act money, yep. CARES Act money. Yeah, there were three requirements for CARES Act money. Um, and one of them was that it was an unbudgeted expense as of March, whenever this happened, 2020, right? It's been a year, yeah. 2020. Yeah, yeah. So like um, buying masks, uh, you know, uh, for the police department, for any town department, it, even the schools. Yep. Uh, extra expenses to make sure every kid had a laptop or. Uh, right. What, that's stuff that you didn't know was going to happen. And uh, so that was covered. Right. Who know who decides the guidelines? Uh, deal. Uh, well, 
It came through U.S. Treasury through Division of Local Services. How are they going to police it? Um, yeah, just like what, anything else. What they, what they told us, they said, we're going to give you the money and you're going to spend it in accordance with the guide, guidance and we're going to audit some of you. The school would have spend their hand it right. out every step. The school would have their hand out every step of the way. What about the town? Mm. A little bit. You could do it the same way. Yep. Um, I think this is a conversation that you have to bring Shelly in and uh, maybe get back to us, Brian, on the specifics. Yeah. You good? You good with that? At some point. Yeah, I'll, I'll send her an email and see what. Okay. See what she says. I'll send her Darius an email. Okay. Good. All right. All right. Um, so are we basically all in agreement about re reducing the tax rate by two hundred thousand, as it's said here? Yes. And, okay. Okay. Any no further discussion? And anybody want to make any other comments? Okay. Um, so for that, um, I felt that for all these capital items, we would just take a roll call at the end and say yay or nay. And if you say nay, go, go back to the specific One. expense that you'd like to speak about. Okay. I, have one, I have one more question that I, I don't know. Remember the skylight in the cafeteria at the elementary school? Yeah. Did they ever take it out? Yep. It's gone. Right. It's gone. Good job, Paul. Dan. Yep. Well, how about before you go to a vote, just ask if anyone has any item they'd like to be considered separately. Okay. Uh, let's get through it, and okay. then we'll go back to that and take Fred's suggestion, and we'll, um, if we have to carve something out, we will. Um Okay, um, 250th anniversary celebration. I think last year we that that was take taken off the table. That was taken off last year. All right, right. put it back on. And now it's in. Yeah. Um, Fred, would you like to speak to that or? Uh, um, we're back. The, the 250th is back on track. You're gonna. I hope everyone's gonna either be in or see a wonderful parade that we're gonna be putting on on this Saturday. Yep. And I will just put in a plug that John Hannum did an incredible job putting it together. Yeah. It was not even thought of until mid-February. Yep. And here we are at the end of April, and he's got 40-something people lined up to be in it. Wow. That's terrific. <laughs> um, so that that be a long should, should be a good event. And yeah. we're going to – we've got – we're on target now to – essentially do whatever we were going to do this year, next year. Yeah, great. So we're still looking at fireworks, a parade, and other events, assuming, again, public health considerations. Okay. Don't Perfect. restrict. Sounds good. Uh, and um, I know I look forward to all, all of those activities. Um, that's terrific. Okay. Um, town office crack ceiling, $1,000. Okay. Yeah. Comments, thoughts. Okay. Frontier capital request of $5,435. Brian, could you give us a refresher on that? Yeah, that was, uh, I think Darius talked about it. Um, it says um, to provide for capital project funding in fiscal year 2022 for cleaning of gymnasium ducts, cleaning of auditorium ducts, and the replacement of stage curtain okay. for the allocation below. Conway, 5,700. Deerfield, 15,000. Town of Sunderland, 8,600. Town of Waitley, 5,400. Okay. All right. All right. Any comments, thoughts? All right. Next, police reform expenses of $15,000. Um. I know we spoke to the chief on the last meeting and I think he was, you know, quite um, 
serious about the need for these monies and how police reform is going to um, impact the department. Um, any thoughts, questions, comments on the $15,000? One question is, is yep. this was, if I remember, he was estimating roughly 30 odd thousand total. So is this a half, essentially a half payment or a one year and then we'll have another 15 next year? That would or, be or, or is it a three year program? Uh, um, the education uh, was a three year program. Yeah. Right. So, so there's just there's just a lot of uncertainty. Yeah, this is um, an unfunded <laughs> mandate by the state, mm -hmm. and nobody knows how it's going to trickle, right. how it's going to shake out yet. He's trying right. to get ahead of the curve, which I can understand. Oh, I, I understand. So, I'm just trying to just figure out or <clears throat> learn: is this you know, not that I'm in two, favor of? Is it. this based on a two year or three year? I don't have that answer. I don't know if um, I don't think anybody does. No. no. Yeah. Um, I think he's just trying to create this little, yeah, um, egg for and just yeah, in case. right someplace he can go to to make sure things okay. are paid. So I'm up for that. So we got this transfer of stabilization at 45, and then we have a zero. Um, before we take a vote, um, going back to Fred's suggestion, does anyone have uh, thoughts about us? Calling out any of these expenses that are here and voting on them separately. I think the only one you're going to have to vote on separate is the one we split. Driveway. Okay. Um, all right. So we have, uh, I think everybody has the expenses in front of them. Um, yeah. Are we good with um, everything that we've reviewed? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any further comments, questions? Um, just again, to clarify, just essentially aside from the school parking lot and the cemetery, we're going with whatever, with the sheet as Brian sent it out before the meeting. Correct. Yes. Yes, I think the rationale has been made for each of these costs and um, we still have, you know, a significant amount of free cash remaining and um, I think we're in good shape. That's fine, so, I just wanted to clarify. Okay, that's good. Okay, so um, do I have a motion to vote on the capital items? I make a motion we vote on the capital items minus the driveway and the uh, fence for the cemetery. Okay. I, I second a motion. All right. Let's take, we'll do a roll call. Bobby? Yes. Uh, Jim? Yes. Patty? Yep. Fred? Yes. Dan? Yes. Paul? Yes. Did I forget um, anybody? Yes. Tom. Yes. I was looking right at you too. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. All righty. No, um, no more brisket for you. Uh, son of a gun. It's down there. It's down there waiting. It's waiting. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Brian, you good? Yeah, I want no, to do the we need to vote on the other thing on the we driveway go back to split. Lot. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Told, told you. Okay. So we have uh, the parking lot has been um, amended. Amended to $45,000. And then the, the $45,000 has been split between vehicle stabilization and capital stabilization. Yes. Okay. I think tw twenty-five to building and twenty to cap to vehicle. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, when that when that fund becomes um, yeah. created, we'll create created in here. Um, <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. So the twenty-five goes to building yeah. stabilization, 
The $20,000 will go to vehicle stabilization. $45,000 will remain in the reconstruction of the parking lot at Waitley Elementary School to be added to next year um, to complete that project. I make a motion we vote yes on, or make a motion we vote on the statement you just made. I'll second. second that. Okay, we'll take a roll call again. Bobby? Yes. And Jim? Yes. Tom? Yes. Gotcha. Uh, Fred? Yes. Dan? Yes. And I'm yes as well. Did I forget Patty? <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> no, I did. I knew. See, I knew it. I caught myself. So it's. it's like I really didn't forget you. See, <laughs> okay, and Patty's yes as well. So it's uh, it's yes right across the boards. All right. Okay. Um, all right. So that's capital. We can put that to bed. And um, our next our next uh, item here on the agenda is the. Um, do we want to do the operating budget now or should we save that to the end? Brian, do you have any um, thoughts on that? Um, um, no, not necessarily. I guess maybe I, I thought Keith was coming, but maybe not. Okay. I mean, um, we have two representatives from the personnel committee. Yes, we do. Keith and Joyce. Okay. Tom, Tom and Joyce. Okay. Um, we could do that, or we could talk about budgets. Whatever, whatever one. It's gonna <coughs> really. They both well, impact. They both impact the the spreadsheet we're looking at now. Okay. Um, well, let's. Um, why don't we take the personnel committee now, and then. Um, do you think Keith is coming to the meeting or? Uh, I, I could have misunderstood. Okay. So I think we could take it. Cause we we're at seven o'clock now. So, and yeah. the, uh, and the mm -hmm. operating budget is, uh, you know, we're going to have to go through that. So, okay. So let's, um, let's talk a little bit about, um, the personnel committee recommendations, and um, where we sit with that, Tommy, you're you're on that. I was, I am, but I was not at the last meeting. But I kind of know what's going on. Okay. And who else is on? Dan? No. No. Not me. no. Joyce. Is Joyce. Oh, Joyce. But Joyce is not here. She's here I now. I am so. I am so here. Well, you Man. You you're like you dissing know. all the women here. You're just going to get a reputation. Paul, I'm right? I know I am. Um, <clears throat> you, but you're sneaking up on us. So that's the other thing. That's, hey, he's uh, equal I'm, opportunity. He missed Tom, too. I did. I missed Tom. All right. We're Twice. keeping track. Twice. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're all right. So um, would anyone like to advocate, someone from the committee, advocate for these the changes that we see here or um, speak to them or talk I can about talk them. about the 2% because I was there for yeah. that meeting. We okay. talked about a okay. 2% cost of living increase and that by looking at other towns and around us and the cost of living, you know, and that we've been hanging around that 2% for the last three or four years. So we yep. voted to go with the 2%. Okay. And that's going to cost fourteen or fifteen thousand dollars more, Brian. Yeah, it's that fifty one. Right. Fourteen seven five one. Yep. That's the additional. Okay. And um so the reason we do this separate is that I don't have to we do uh twenty budgets three different times. Yeah. Um gotcha. just allows us to look at a whole number and then that's why, as I said in my email, that's why it's it's not really possible to vote on final budgets tonight because I need the opportunity to go and make those adjustments right. based on what we decide tonight. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Um, salary adjustments. 
Um, Joyce, I guess that's your department there. Okay. Um, I don't, um, are we look at the salary adjustments aren't listed on this board that I can see here. Okay. Um, but we went through our usual process for most of these, that is we mm -hmm. compared to some towns that are uh, similar to us in a number of ways. We had redone the number, the, the towns, oh, maybe it was three years ago or perhaps four. Um, so for most of these, we're just uh, bringing people who were significantly below up to the median. Um, there was one position, the uh, assessor, where the, um, the assessors came and made a, an argument that we should be comparing with different towns. And so we brought that one up to the median uh, based on their argument. Okay. Um, that's... Uh, uh, so that's the, the salary increases, I think, in a nutshell. Okay. It's a total of $9,764. Um, we have to take into consideration that unlike capital expenses, these don't go away. They, they stay mm -hmm. in from year to year until um, the employee leaves or retires or whatever. Um, do I have any thoughts or comments from the finance committee regarding these salary adjustments? Is the scope of the survey data the same for all positions or does it vary from position to position? It's when you say the scope, say what you said, the scope of the the survey data that you use to oh. make adjustments in, mm -hmm. in each of these positions? Is the scope the same or is it different? As much as we can. When we say scope, like the scope of work, like the positions are comparable to each other. Well, um, where, where does the survey data come from? I assume from different towns in the area? Yes. Yeah. Yes, so it's from different from towns in the Berg state of Hog provides some. Um, yeah, we uh, used to go with uh, FERCOG, but the, the like the towns in Franklin County, there uh, many of them are are very different from us. So we actually have towns from across the state, but um, uh, and we had a criteria like size, uh, percentage of the tax base that is um, that is from real estate, um, the uh, a, a few other criteria that were um, not just you happen to be in Franklin County. Um, because, you know, a town twice as large as us, three times as large as us, like Deerfield, is probably not a good town to compare for salaries because responsibilities of jobs would vary a lot as well. Now, honestly, it varies a bit among the towns we, uh, we do compare to, uh, but uh, it's, we sort of feel like we've got a set of towns that are a lot more like us than we used to use when we were comparing to FERCOG data. Um, so that, and, and I, uh, I don't have in front of me the, the, like, I think there was like seven or eight or nine criteria. Um, there are some towns that won't have an equivalent position. So we don't always have nine salaries to, uh, to average or to find the median of, and we generally toss the highest and lowest, uh, unless that only gives us one salary left. <laughs> um, so, th so there are cases where those comparisons um, are, you know, really need to be looked into a little bit more. Um, but uh, we're, I think for most of these, I'm comfortable with, uh, with saying, yes, our jobs are comparable uh, for the most part. Um, oh, I think there was one other uh, exception. Is it in there, Brian, or is uh, Keith separate from that? Fire chief? It's in there. Yeah, it's in there. Okay. So there I was, can share it if you want. Yeah. Okay. There was one other position that we treated slightly differently. Um, and that was because Keith is both the highway and building superintendent. Uh, and this building superintendent part has just been for the last couple of years. Um, so it did not seem fair to compare him to directly to other highway superintendents um, because the responsibilities are different. And that's one of the lines where when we look at it, um, where it's hard to it's hard to compare because Hatfield's a uh, superintendent has a, a you know, kind of a different set of jobs and other, and so so it can get really complicated really quickly. Um, but one of the things we did was we said, well, back in uh, two years ago, I think we gave Keith a seven percent bump when we 
gave him the building superintendent responsibilities. Okay. Um, so we decided that what we were going to do is we, we can get reliable highway department, um, highway superintendent data from towns, then let's base his salary on 7% above median. Um, otherwise that bump he got would just kind of erode over time being compared to a different position. And that uh, honestly, we, you know, I don't know if 7% was the right bump to give him. That may be something to study in the future, but this seems to at least preserve that salary bump that goes with that extra responsibility he has. So that one is slightly different from the others, um, but uh, that was our, our reasoning when we went through there. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have a question. Um, does the time ever present itself where the, a municipality has to draw a line in the sand about the value of a given position? And I'm, I'm, ju I'm just going to uh, pull one out of here, but it's a, but it's, for instance, election workers. Okay, so I get it. We want to, you know, compensate them at minimum wage. Okay. But will the day come when they're $19 an hour, $30 an hour because, because we want to keep pace with inflation, which is a, and this is a very part-time job. Mm. I mean, I'm saying you could get election workers for 10 bucks an hour. Probably. I mean, uh, probably. I think we yeah. still have to, we're still subject to state minimum wage laws. And I agree, there's a lot of jobs on here that are just above the minimum wage. Um, and, and maybe Lynn can speak, Lynn's probably not on this call, but um, I, I think most, it's really, a if you're getting minimum wage, it's more or less a volunteer job um, for like election worker. I think that is really more or less a volunteer job. I think uh, we re really have to recruit them <laughs> and people are doing it not for the money. Uh, I don't see that particular position as one where we're going to have to pay competitive rates to get people to, to do that job. We just may need to twist some arms and ask for some civic, um, uh, you know, civic duty um, on the part of anybody. Sure. Uh, it, is, it is largely, it's retired folks often who yeah. are doing the election workers. Right. So, but there are things where I, I really like that we're paying a little bit more than minimum wage for our um, say our transfer station attendants, because that's, that's an Im important job. And I think they work hard. And I think it's, uh, it's important that we keep ahead of minimum wage on that one. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, there is value in all of these positions. Mm -hmm. there, is, there is value, um, to the taxpayer, um, for the, work that all of these individuals provide to the town. Mm -hmm. um, but at some point in time, there has to be, this is it. This is what we pay. And, and, and it's not going to be a bump every single year. I mean, it, 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 it just. I, I, I agree that we don't give every person a bump every year other than a cost of living adjustment. So that's. I, I think we're we're on the same page there. One of the one of the things the personnel committee has talked about doing, and it's way more involved than anybody could possibly imagine, is it, we Waitley doesn't have we don't there aren't enough employees in Waitley to have like a like the school does a step system where you, you know, after five years, you automatically get a raise or in addition to your cost of living. Yep. We've never been able to get ourselves wrapped around how to do that with so few employees. So yep. consequently, mm -hmm. we're for it. And it, this, I'm not at all in favor of this, Paul, but one of the things you, you, and because we can't do it that way, we have to do it this way, which you know, well, it seems like every year yeah. we're, we're the senior you know. operator gets a raise. Well, right. that, we don't have the same senior operator. We've got a different one now than we had two years ago. See, I, I, I think we need to come 
at come at this issue from another direction. And I think that direction is a zero sum game. And what we have to do is we have to take a look at our complete salaries in town and look at a cost um, salary, average salary per employee, and then say, okay, this now the finance committee, along with the select board and everybody else, we come to an agreement on a total amount of money. And then we give that to the departments. And we say to the departments, this is what you have for raises. And you take those, you take that amount of money and you distribute that to the people that report to you. And certain departments are gonna get more money and certain departments are gonna get less, but no one's gonna get the same year in, year out. And I think that's the kind of approach that we at least need to have a discussion on. Um, a zero sum game. Um, I where... agree, I, I really agree where you're coming from. I, I, I can totally understand that. It's about a value for what the job is. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's, yeah. the... <laughs> I'm, I mean, you know, I, I, I don't want to, um, you know, just yeah, jump. I, I mean, the, the highway department. Okay. So here we have a senior operator laborer co com increased compensation from A to B. Okay. Well, maybe Keith has to have a discussion that we can't do that this year because this is the amount of money I have to spend in my department for raises. And it's, and I think that kind of discussion, we're not going to solve it tonight, but I would like us as a finance committee um, to be able to look at that in a more serious light. Okay. I've said my piece. Does anybody want to comment on that? Well, I think it's a good idea to get the, the amount of increase should be decided by the boss of that department, right. not by the personnel committee. Right. Well, what happens is the, the department head comes in, like with the highway department, Keith comes in. Well, Keith doesn't come in because he's already there. But he, you know, he says, uh, uh, looking at the uh, data we have and everything, uh, our senior operator laborer is underpaid uh, compared to other towns around us. So, you know, then we we don't go with the high. You feel level. guilty. You feel guilty. In, in some ways, you do. Mm -hmm. I'll admit to that. Okay. And then, I mean, it, it comes down to choices. And you can't make everybody happy all the time. Oh, we all, I, and, and we don't. I, I get that. We don't do that. But I yeah. think as, as a town to be fiscally responsible, I think what we need to do is we need to track our total salaries, our total salary expenses. I think we have to get an average salary per, per employee. And we have to use those benchmarks as to where the salaries are going to go in the following year. And, and un until we get a handle on that, um, this is going to spin out of control. It could, it could, because if, if I, if we take that number, we go back five years, let's take a look at what that number was then. And I'm including COLA. I'm including everything that we pay out in salaries. And let's take a look at where we've come in five years and how have, how has the town benefited? Now the town has benefited because yes, we have good employees. They do a good job, all of those things. Exactly. Um, but we've also paid for it. Um, so I think until we have a view from a zero sum gain for all employees, all employees share the same pool. Um, that's hey, my Paul, feeling. This is Patty. Yeah. I, I think it would be difficult to not, I think you have to um, separate the raises, so to speak, from the colas. 
um, because the colas are based on economic factors that are happening throughout, you know, our, throughout the, the state. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that's got to be something that we leave up to the personnel committee to decide based on, you know, whatever, again, economic factors they work on. I think the raises, yeah, definitely. But I don't know that you can, I think you have to separate out the, the colas. I think the colas been 2% for years. No, we, I thought that too, uh, but it, we, Bobby, but we went back and looked at it and uh, Brian can yeah. tell you, it was, you know, one year was a one and a half and it was 1.75 and it, it's never been more than 2%. And then mm-hmm. you agree with that, Joyce? I think there might have been one year in my memory where it was higher. Am I muted? Okay. Um, I think there might have been one year in the recent past where it was higher than two, like we went 2.25. I remember I that. I think one year. But mm-hmm. I think the, the other thing with the 2% is that's what they're getting at the schools. That's what our other public employees we, are getting. We get held hostage and, by the schools. And to some extent. I guess the other, uh, Paul had asked for comments. Um, it sounds like uh, we can eliminate the personnel committee completely then, and I can have um, a few more Monday nights on my own. Um, if the finance committee wants to do what you say you're doing, we don't need the personnel committee anymore. It's just department heads and the finance committee, right? You don't have that other body of people doing any kind of you know mediation or or you know sorting through data, sifting through the the table of different departments in different towns. Um, it's less work for me, but I think the personnel committee actually performs a service here. And um, I, I'm not saying that we can't do things differently. I think we could honestly, in the personnel committee, we could use a little bit more professional help, not just professional help. I mean, professional help in terms of, hey, what should these job descriptions be? Uh, what should the salaries be? Can we find a better way to do this? But uh, you know, as a group of volunteers with an overworked town admin, an administrative assistant, I, we're, we're not going to be able to do something that's reasonable. And I would really hate to risk um, that we, like, for example, don't pay very much so that anybody who's got any skills may get a few skills in Waitley and then they go work someplace else. And um, it, you know, there is a cost to that. So uh, it's, it's not necessarily a straightforward, I know zero sum game is a, is a nice phrase, but um, I, I think you have to count everything. And the fact that we've got very loyal, long standing employees who don't need new, we don't need to train a new person every three months is actually something that does factor into the sum of that. So that's, uh, that's just my piece. Um, if I can comment on what Joy said, I agree with that. We have that looking at the sheet that was just up, most of the increases were based on the salary survey, which means we're competing with other towns for this personnel. And we have yeah. to, and if we set an, essentially an artificial ceiling on what we would pay in raises, ultimately we will fall behind the other towns and lose talent. I, I, I think to, to get a comparison for, for other towns, uh, what, what personnel committee is doing is, is just looking at that position. I, I think you you may need to look more specifically on the position. What does a position description include, and how long has that person been in that job? Does does he supervise other people? What else does he do? Because because a lot of towns their position it, 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 it varies. And it's hard to tell just by a position, whether it's fire chief or senior laborer or senior operator, that person could be there a year or 10 years. No, we we understand that, Fred. And we understand that that's that's a, a known problem with the system, but that's a known problem with comparing to any towns. That's a known problem with comparing to FERCOG averages. There's all, I mean, that is a known problem. And with many of these small towns, we can get some information about how many people uh, various positions are, um, are are supervising. So we we do our best, but we could use some help. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and, and the more we can dig into those positions, the better off we'll be. But, you know, honestly, if some other town called us up and said, hey, could you give me the, the description for your senior laborer? It's probably out of date. 
it probably doesn't reflect what we have our senior laborers doing right. or any number of other, because we haven't been through the job descriptions on so many of these things in a long time. I, I, I'm just saying that it's, you're, you're, I, I don't disagree with anybody who says we need more information. Uh, and uh, I'm saying we don't have the infrastructure to get that information very easily, given the, the volunteer nature of most of the, of the personnel committee. Um, okay. I, okay, I agree with what you're saying. Just my thought, if we wanted to improve it, what else could we do? And I understand mm -hmm. we don't yeah. have staff to do that, so. No. Right, correct. Okay, okay. Um, this certainly leads us to, uh, to Brian's memo um, following this conversation. But um, so up to this point, um, we have, I think we went, we went through the COLA. So um, Brian, would you like us to vote on this now? Brian. Brian. Left. Yeah, there he is. Um, yeah, because well, yeah, it would be good if we do it this meeting. Then that'll give me the opportunity to go back and adjust all the budgets that need to be adjusted. Um, and then that will allow us. It will allow the finance committee to take a final vote on the numbers. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it's always one it's meeting after on. we vote on this that I okay. would need. Okay. So let's um. Right now, um, let's take them separately. Do I have a motion to vote on the COLA um, adjustments that the personnel committee has recommended of $14,751.32 representing a 2% COLA adjustment? So moved. I'll second it. Okay, we'll do a roll call. Bobby? Yes. Patty? Yes. Tommy? Yes. Okay, getting okay, good. Um, Fred? Yes. And Jim? Yes. And I'm a yes. Uh, now you're picking on me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you keep hiding that way. I'm telling you. It. You're doing it on purpose now. I know it. You got to write these names down. Paul. I'm sorry. Uh, Dan, I Roger, vote I vote yes. Okay. Okay. So, is there anybody else I forgot before we go on? All right. Okay. So that's uh, that's good. Okay. So now, um, salary adjustments. Any further questions, comments, or discussion? Okay. No. Okay. So we have a um, yes. Did somebody ask? Uh, no? Okay. Um, Brian, do we have a total of these? Yes. Okay. We have a total uh, for salary adjustments for specified town employees for a total of $9,764 from the personnel committee. We'll put that to a vote. Do I have a motion? Moved. Seconded. Okay. We'll... Do the roll call again. Okay, Bobby? Yes. Patty? Yes. Tommy? Yes. Dan? Yes. Fred? Yes. Jim? Yes. Did I call Bobby? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. And I'm yes as well. Anybody? I got everybody. All right. Hey. <laughs> Cooking with gas now. Yes. Not propane either. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so that's that's good. We um, um, uh, I would like to uh, table our discussion on future um, salary approaches. Let's put it that way for another meeting. Are we okay with that? Yep. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good. Uh, uh, all right. Okay. Okay. So um, next we have uh, our operating budget. Um, Brian, are you okay with this now? Did Brian leave? Again. I'm here. Unbelievable. So we're going to move to the operating budget. Are you good with that? Yeah. So you want to table the, which, which age, what are you tabling? Just not I thought you were here. 
I'm not tabling anything. Uh, oh, okay. The, the, the discussion on the methods for determining yes. increases. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, yeah. Tab right. Thanks, Fred. Um, tabling that discussion for another Fire table. Meeting. Okay. Um, okay. So we all have uh, we all have it in front of us. Um, I'll tell you what I'll do. Um, I think we should all. Does everybody have it in front of them? The total enterprise fund, the uh, town of Whaley total and enterprise fund budget, fiscal year 2022. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll bring it up. Okay. That's what you're talking about, right? Uh, yeah, but we're going to go department by department because right. this is the time that we do that. So I think we want to move to the next sheet. Yeah. So, so these and won't be final amounts because I need to adjust costs that were just voted upon. But Okay. But we can look at each of these departments and pretty much they're going to stay the same. And we will vote on the total budget um at the very end i don't think we have to we, we 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 will open it up to discussion by department and then vote on the entire amount at the very end is that good does anybody object to that would well, anyone I, like to um carve something out um, well i i don't think you need to take a final vote because the total budget amounts will change okay. it's just more of um giving me instructions as to pretty much near final instructions. If you're going to say, I want to take X amount of dollars from this budget. Gotcha. Just instruct me to do that. Okay. Um, that way I can present at the next meeting okay. as close to final as we can get. Okay. So we'll start off with general government, total budget, $452,416. Dollar change of 22729 for 5.29% increase, open to discussion right now. Okay, move on. Cultural Recreation Services. Tommy, why don't you take that one? Uh, total budget is $134,814.80 with an increase of $2,607.80, a 1.97% increase. Floor is open. Any discussion? What about, what about Tri Town? Uh, they must have there at defunct. Good question. Uh, yeah, I think that's one before we vote, we should get clarity on what on what the ask is that's that's a carryover from their um, what they ask, what, from their what, ask last year and we don't know if they're going to open or, or what the expectation is um right. but i think we we'll want clarity on that good pickup yeah okay. let's not let's just pass that one then okay so let's um that needs to be clarity we need yeah. clarity um i don't think it's going higher let's put it that way i would hope <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think we need to know. Does that assume lifeguards opening? Oh, yeah, or closed or not? Right. I think there's too there's too many weeds in there for them to open the place up. Okay, let's just go right up the ladder, Jim. <clears throat> the next group, public health, total budget ninety two thousand seven hundred ninety seven, with an increase of five thousand ninety three. A percent increase of 5.81. Floor is open for discussion. How come the health agent went up so much? More hours? Was it more hours? More, more COVID uh, stuff. COVID. COVID stuff. COVID, COVID. They had a, COVID they had a higher a, uh, they had a higher higher half, half, I think it was half-time health agent. Yeah. An assistant. Okay. Public safety, Dan. Public safety. Could you scroll it up a touch? Yeah, we're, we're there we go. 
Total of 399,241. Uh, change is up 10,131, a 2.6 increase. Okay. Floor is open for discussion. Any questions? Okay. Okay, next we'll have uh, scroll down. Okay, Public Works. Patty, you can take that. Awesome. Public Works. <laughs> 400, 464 dollars, an increase of 2,482 or 0.62%. Uh, percent. Okay. Yeah. Floor is open for discussion. Any pushback? Any thoughts? No. no. I think we've we've beaten this one. And uh, Darn good increase. Okay, um, we'll go to the next one. Um, Fred, insurance and benefits. Total budget $829,433. Change of $29,367, 3.67% increase. Okay. Mo most of which is from the OPEB. Yeah. Right. Payment. right. Right. So, what is, is the Franklin County Retirement and Assessment? Mm, yep. It's an assessment that we pay. Yep. I would think okay. so. Mm. Yep. And I, I will add, I expect, and I'll get final numbers for our next meeting, but I expect workers' comp insurance to go up. Mm. Um, That's good news. Huh? Based on our, based on our, our meeting, the 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 towns. Uh, track record over the past couple of years. Okay. Usage of the insurance over the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. okay. floor, floor continues to be open for discussion. Anybody have any questions about the insurance and benefits? No? Okay. Um, let's scroll down. Can you scroll down? Um, okay. Um, Unclassifieds, $72,953, increase of $572 for a 0.79% increase. Do we have any, the floor is open for discussion. Any thoughts about or questions on this, these costs? Um, okay, we're good. <laughs> okay, let's scroll down to schools. Bobby, you got that one? Sure. Okay. Got to go higher, though. There. $2.945 a decrease. We'd be foolish not to approve anything like this, considering all the years that we had to just suck it up and pay. I know. Uh, yeah. you get it. It's a tough... Uh, Who would have thought? They drive a hard bargain, but we may what have go, to what take goes it. around comes around. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It can um, make up. It can make us look really good at our elementary school because we can increase our budget probably by a little bit more than anybody else is because frontier. There you go. And um, maybe we can do a little. That might help out with the competition for school of choice. Well, when you get down right to the end of it, if you think about the four schools, Waitley probably has the Cadillac school in the in the Union Thirty Eight. I agree. What's going on? But they, I mean, yep. Union Thirty Eight probably wouldn't agree with that. But no. that would be my guess. I'm, I'm guessing what's going on in the school. If the kid wants it, they can get it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'll I'll tell you, um, Brian sent out a little. Uh, uh, you, know, you know, the spreadsheet about costs in the school department. And I, I, had, I had a chance to take a look at it. And our cost per pupil in Waitley is $18,088.85, <laughs> which is um, Conway is $4,000 more. And Hatfield is $5,000 less. Um, so I thought it was pretty interesting. What, you know, a, what a span. Yeah. Information for another time, but uh, something that we should um, also be on top of. So the floor is open. Whaley Elementary, Frontier, Franklin, Smith Volk. Any discussion 
Um, Just a reminder that Brian was going to talk to the school, to the Waitley School, about whether any of the uh, payments are compensatable by the CARES Act. Right, right. Okay. Yep. Very good, Fred. Good pickup on that. Um, all righty. Where are we, Brian? Let's keep scrolling down. I think we're at. Oh, are we I think done? We're at debt. No, I think we're at debt. Okay. Okay. Well, debt is debt. I mean, we still have the uh, got the wood chipper, the excavator, and um, at forty eight thousand six hundred sixty dollars, um, we're still paying. So, and for the first time in years, bad. no fire truck. Fire truck. Not bad. You know. Let's keep it um, that way. Exactly. Um, we already talked about the personnel recommendations regarding salary and COLA, so uh, we're good with that. And um, oh. let's take uh, – let's scroll down a little more, Brian, please. Okay. And so we have the uh, – the last part is uh, the Enterprise Fund. Dan, you can take that. Okay, the Enterprise Fund is a uh, total increase of a budget of four, 403, 246, increase of 7567, 1.9%. Right. Not okay. too bad. No, um, you know, all these budgets are tight. And um, floor is open. Any questions? about the water department. I, I just have a comment or it's really a reminder about operations. Um, yeah. You know, that's inflated by the 200,000 um, that's expected to uh, be returned in hookup fees for the water merger project. So their typical operate, their typical operating expenses is around um, 97, 98,000. Um, okay. But in order for us to, we need to show that, that um, those expenses are gonna be incurred so that we can pay it off in the in that same fiscal year. Um, so if you were to look at FY20, there'd be a significant increase. We we hope to get it done in 21, but it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, so that will come back down after this year. Um, it better because that project. When's the going to take place? When's um, the end? I hope this. I. The finish line I hope this fight. fall. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, keep your fingers crossed um, that this will come to a, come to closure here. Um, okay, so we get that. Any other discussions about the water department or thoughts? Okay. All right, Brian. That's it. Okay. Um, we're not gonna. We'll vote on. We'll. We will vote all of these at the next meeting once Brian has plugged in the new numbers and um, and we'll probably just take a general vote on the entire sum unless we need to carve things out to have another discussion about something that was unanticipated. Everybody good with that? Good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. Brian, are you okay with that? Yeah, we should talk about the, the, the other request of the third request there. Okay. About the additional staffing, right? That number isn't in there. Yeah. It's in green. Oh, I see it. Right here. Yeah. Um, okay. I so said that. It is in the final budget, the number. Yeah, it's included in that final amount. Okay. All right. Um, I don't know. Y'all, I think y'all had the chance to read the memo. Yeah. Um, and it comes back to a lot of even some of what we were talking tonight is in terms of personnel, um, finance committee, um, housing committee. There's stuff that I think we need to take a, a deeper dive into. There's things that we need to get addressed as committees and, and the admin staff doesn't have that capacity right now. The planning board needs help. Um, you know, finance committee, one of the things we talked about was, and Fred, hopefully this can get going. Um, is, is looking at the tax rate. Um, there's just a lot of things that that boards and committees need help with, um, and they need they need staff to do it. Um, it's really been something that 
that I've noticed kind of, it keeps getting, it keeps accruing. There's, there's things that just need to get addressed and we, we push them off because they're not time sensitive. Um, and COVID really, we pushed a lot of stuff off when COVID happened. Um, and it really as a town, it's just, I think something that, that we're all going to need to address at some point. Um, there's a lot of grant opportunities out there that, that, that we don't have the time to develop projects. Um, it takes a lot of time to develop projects with committees. Um, there's recurring grant opportunities that I just fear we're just not going to be able to get to green communities, grants, um, the energy committee, um, really doesn't meet that often. We're not developing projects. We're not, we're not doing the stuff that we need to, to get in line for those grant opportunities. Um, you know, Complete Streets is another one that's going to keep coming up. That funded the whole entire work in the center of town. Um, that was work with the Complete Streets Committee. Um, you know, there's grant opportunities that 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 we should be applying for, in my opinion. So, Brian, the proposal is for another full-time administrative assistant. Um, well, I would like... Ideal world, I think it would be someone who would be more like half-time community development, who could work with the planning board on some of their needs. Um, they've they provided a written request that I that I haven't included, but um, they need help to try to get um, you know get the bylaws straight. They need help with some of these projects that are coming, you know, solar, marijuana. Um, we're not doing single-family houses anymore like they used to. Mm -hmm. um, the housing committee, I'm sure the housing committee could use help. You know, we have 120, around 120,000, right, of CPA funds that are, that we just can't get traction to, um, to get going on anything with that. Um, but and then but part, you're, you're, this is a proposal for, for a full-time person, how that person's time gets divided essentially will be in your court. Right, yep. Yeah, my proposal would be that it that it. But this is one full time position. Yes, it's a full. It would be a full time position. And do you expect that you will have um, a job description for this position um, sooner than later? Because I, I I don't think any. I think everybody here is going to understands that the need. There's an this. incredible amount of work in there, and that and that. Yeah, we we need bodies um yeah yeah but i i think from our perspective um that if there was a job description saying what this person is going to be doing yeah um that it would be much easier it would be much easier to put that out in the budget have a discussion on town floor if need be um with that kind of documentation so yeah that that would be fairly i could do that in in really short time um okay that would be uh that'd be good um anybody yeah, else i think any? we, i think we i have no doubt the position is needed but we need a description yeah yeah absolutely and uh no doubt that it's needed either yeah no this 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 and that you know just um going along that same job description do we have a job description for select boards like what they are, like, I know we elect them. I know that they go to meetings every other week. And I know that many <laughs> of them are involved with many other committees, but, uh, but when it comes to what are we paying for? No, I'm not saying it makes you're not paying money. them enough, Paul. No, it uh, doesn't matter. They want the job. They went after the job. They knew what the job paid and I think they all do a good job. Don't get me wrong, but do we have a job description for selectmen, select board members? That is a good question. I can find that out for you. That'd be great. I'd like to see. I'd like to. Uh, I'd like, like to know if that. we have that and what it, that is. Is it something we can do, or is it a position that's mandated by state law? I think it's mandated by our charter. I would imagine, right? Well, which would fall under state law. Yeah. There is, yeah. some, there is some descriptions of what a select board's role is, just like there's descriptions what the finance committee's role is. Mm -hmm. The state has a handbook of public officials that goes into detail on this. It may be even online. 
you really want to want to look at it. So yeah, uh, I, I think most most town boards, uh, select boards, and finance kind of follow that. It tells you what you should do, uh, recommends ways to to operate to get mm -hmm. success, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I look yeah. at it occasionally, I guess, to see, but. Uh, yeah. Beyond that, I don't know what else there is. I just, I just, you know, I, I had never seen anything like that, but that's a good point, Fred. Um, I'll go online to see what that has to say, but um, yeah. And I know the finance committee handbook's online and you can take a look at that. Um, but um, okay, just a thought. Um, Brian, do you have anything? else to say about the position that you'd like to advocate anything or are you done um i i think i'm done like i said in the memo if it's something that we can fund through at least this year through the america rescue plan i think that's something I, i'm always for replacing town funds with somebody else's money so yeah okay and, i'm i'm brian we'll see you again next year when this person becomes overworked and needs more help yeah. <laughs> Fred, Fred, that's a that's a good that's a good lead in to my next point. Uh, Brian, we're completely behind you on this, but so help me if you take off and go somewhere else, we're we're gonna follow I'm you, after you baby. wherever you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just uh, uh for the, I'd like to put something on our next meeting um for discussion, not just the uh taking a look at salaries, but I'm, I'm a big proponent of transparency, and I think uh, a taxpayer has a right to be able to take a look at where the tax dollar is going whenever they want to. We have the technology now to be able to do that, and I would like us to track the spend. Tracking the spend is an integral part of what we should be doing. I need For the staff to do it. What? <laughs> I said, I need the staff to do it. <laughs> right. I need somebody right. to do it. Well, here's the, and I got a feeling that that might be happening in the not too distant future. All right. But we, the, the, the average taxpayer should be able to look at dollars per pupil that they spend in their town whenever they want. They should be able to look at dollars, salaries, salary per employee and what our total spend on the employee salary is. They should be able to look at dollars per mile, what we spend on our highways. And they should also be able to look at other large, um, uh, larger uh, departments. For instance, um, the water department, the enterprise fund. What is our total cost per 10,000 gallons over time? All of these things, the average taxpayer should be able to look at this. And I would like us to have a discussion as to how we would, should we roll that out? How do we roll that out? Where do we put that information? We've got a website and I would like to just capture that in a discussion um, downstream. So we are at 751 right now. Do I have any, uh, do we have any thoughts, um, comments? Brian, are you, are you good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Anybody else have any comments, thoughts? No? no. Good. Okay. Good. All right. The meeting is 752 and it is now adjourned. Yep. Have a great night. Have a good week. We have another meeting on May 4th, I believe. Yeah. It's in the books. Yep. Okay. Yep. Brian, am I right on that one? Yep. Okay. So, um, is there a call in number? Because I'm going to actually be on the road, I believe, on the 4th. They're on the memo sheet he sends on. Yeah. It could be on the okay. top of the agenda. Yeah, there's a top okay. number. Okay. okay. Have a great evening, everybody. Thank you for your participation again. Right. And uh, look forward to seeing you out there. Okay. See ya. See you guys. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.